Hello, it's Aaron here from Last Stand Gamers, and today I'm going to let you pick my mind on surviving a zombie apocalypse. So, you probably thought, Aaron has introduced a video once again and made absolutely no sense with its introduction. Well, let's talk about the gameplay first, and I'll get onto that factor in a moment. The gameplay is about, I broke a tyre on my favourite little minivan on this private hive server and the task was I had to go and get it back. I parked the minivan down the road in some bushes and used this hill to overwatch the area. I realised there were some players in the vicinity so I let them play out between each other and then neutralised the biggest threat to me and moved on. Basically moving into the factory and getting my spare wheel. Let's talk about what the video was intended to actually talk about and that was surviving real life scenarios. Obviously, there's no plan for a real-life scenario. Unless you're a prepper, then you've got a little bit of advantage over other people. First of all, I'm going to say I'm no prepper and I've not got any plans. So basically, when shit hits the fan, I'm going to be out there and I'm going to be doing what I need to do. So basically, there's going to be many sorts of things that are going to happen. So we're going to talk about the breakdown of society. The breakdown of society is probably going to happen over the first few weeks. It could even happen in 24 hours. Obviously, once law and order is gone, the society itself is going to break down extremely fast. I mean, there's no way people can handle saying hello nicely to each other without trying to steal something from the other person in the breakdown society sort of situation. Obviously, what would happen is it would restabilize after a while. Obviously, zombies are a big part in this. And I'm going to talk about some of the theories I have now. But first of all, I was debating this with some other guys the other day. We were talking about military basing. Would military last? Well, the first thing I had to say was, they've all got families and they're all probably going to want to get back and see if the families are okay, so it probably split a military base up quite a much. There'd be quite only a few men left. Obviously, some men would be scared to go out and they would stay and hold together. And then the other thing was, if a military base is overrun, someone said to me, well, we could go and loot it and get supplies. Well, would you really want to loot a place if the military themselves can't hold off? These are the two things that are a problem. They've either run out of ammunition Oh, there's so many bloody zombies there, they've been overrun. So it's not really an easy place to go in, pick up a friendly assault rifle, and go, oh, this is a nice assault rifle, and walk straight out. Obviously, you guys in America are going to have a lot better access to firearms, and that means you're going to protect yourself. But on the other hand, in the UK, it means we're going to be a lot safer from bandits and other people that are going to protect us. So basically, what would happen is in a situation in the US, it would be a shootout, here, it'd be two guys either running away or running towards each other with cricket bats or some sort of mache thing that they found or built. So the whole situation would be completely different. Obviously, there's not going to be much traffic of uh, supplies and weapons between the countries either, is there, when the society sort of thing breaks down, so you've got to think about that. Now, some crazy thought of survival things that we were thinking about as well the other day. If someone said to me, why don't you get in a suit of armour like a knight would wear? Well, first of all, the first thing I said was, well, where are you going to really find a suit of armour that's ready available and can move around? So I said to them, they said, well, what about if you just bought some chain mail from the local diving store? And I said, well, that's an alright idea, but obviously it's going to be heavy and it's going to prevent you from moving around. And that means that weight of that chain mail or whatever may save you from a few zombie attacks. But at the end of the day, you're probably going to get pulled apart by the zombies. They'll bite you in the most obscure places like on the face or so on. So you're going to have to cover yourself completely or it's not going to work at all and it'll just be a waste of time completely. Obviously having it on your arms might save you a little bit. Moving on, some of the more extreme ideas I had was, imagine a giant hamster ball, okay? You put yourself in this giant plastic hamster ball and you just take a trip to the shops or whatever you want to do. Because the zombies can see you, they can't touch you. Obviously the problem with this is if you got stuck in a horde, you might be waiting there for a bit of time. And if you run across bandits, then you are quite vulnerable to them. But in on, on paper, it sounds cool, but when it's actually applied, it's not. Uh, back to the gameplay. So basically what's happened is the sniper that was trying to take out the guy at the gate was taken out by the guy on the second floor. Sounds like quite a mouthful. So what's happening here, they're both trying to outplay each other. One's going along the top, and the other guy, I believe, is trying to sneak underneath. But to tell the truth, I couldn't really tell if that was complete fluke luck or the guy on the roof was completely confused and thought the guy was still behind the pipe but we do not know so we'll let that play out while I continue talking obviously you're going to need to get out of a built up area but saying this a lot of people are going to try to get up built up areas as well so maybe staying in a high rise apartment is going to be a hard thing to do with lack of supplies and so on but also it could be a safe thing to do because the amount of people who are going to try to flee the country it means that there's going to be very little properties out there that people can garrison without bumping into other people and obviously the zombies are going to soon shift from the towns and the cities and so on and start moving into these uh, more sort of countryfied areas where there's going to be farms, houses and so on. Obviously you can see them coming and that's always a benefit. 
But the most biggest fear is running zombies. I mean, what do you guys think about running zombies? Do you think zombies should always walk? Or do you think they should always run? Some guy told me the other day that if zombies were really like they were, they'd have the lack of motor skills, so they wouldn't actually be able to run. But who knows? We're all being loads of theories here. I'd love to hear your theories too. So make sure you put them in the comments below. And tell me some of your plans. What sort of things would you do in a zombie survival? Obviously, make sure you tell me if they're in the US or the UK so I know how it would apply. But of course, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this different style of video. And make sure you like it if you want to see some more. And I'll see you next time, guys.